This is where I was standing when I found out I was pregnant. This is what my bank account looked like. And this is the show I was watching with my boyfriend while I was freaking out over how to tell him. I was about to start a new job. I was about to turn 27. And now I had to choose, have a baby, or somehow find a way to be my own abortion doctor. We are the Americans just had their constitutional right to abortion ripped away. Now, millions of women live in states with little or no abortion access. In September, my home state of Texas got a head start on this. The life of every unborn child who has a heartbeat will be saved from the ravages of abortion. So I have already experienced a preview of your future. Self-managed abortion is legally risky and demands anonymity. But I wasn't about to let the government tell me what to do with my body. The first step to doing my own abortion was figuring out how far along I was. This was really important because I was racing multiple clocks. First, the legal clock, which at the time in Texas was six weeks for abortion. Oh, what you want to know about is sexual intercourse. I always thought pregnancy began at conception, but in the eyes of science and the law, pregnancy starts on the first day of your last period. So even though I'm pretty sure this is the night I got pregnant, my last period started on the first, which means I was already eight weeks pregnant. It was already too late to legally get an abortion in Texas, but the biological clock hadn't run out yet. I'd read that it's safe to use abortion pills up to 12 weeks, so I still had four weeks if I could just find them in time. And so I started Googling. I quickly found a clinic promoting free ultrasounds that seemed to offer abortions too. But it turned out to be a pro-life center that tried to convince me not to get an abortion. They led me to believe they would help me, wasting a week of my time and running down the clock. I had three weeks left to figure this out. I wondered if an out-of-state clinic could help me but they were all far enough away that it would have meant missing work at my new job. I felt trapped, entangled in a political battle totally detached from my reality. But then I found information that showed me how to do this on my own. Using pills to have an abortion at home is not new. For years, women have been sharing notes about their experiences underground. These women confided anonymously about why they chose this route. The privacy of mail-order abortion medication is incredible. So I didn't have to drive anywhere. So then I could feel comfortable. I didn't have to be any protesters. I, I was able to in the comfort of my own home. You could have whoever you want around you. You don't have to take off work. You don't have to wait like an entire paycheck or two just to not have to be forced to live with this for the rest of your life. Doing an abortion on your own with pills is medically safe, but there are legal risks. And with Roe vs. Wade now overturned, it's about to become a lot more common. Even in the state that outlaws abortion, there are a couple of ways to get the pills. One way is by ordering from an international pharmacy. Another way is by having a doctor in a place where abortion is legal to prescribe them. This is what I did. First, I had to buy a virtual mailbox in a state where abortion is legal. Once I had my new virtual address, I was able to set up a telehealth appointment. I was worried they were going to turn me away because I had to submit my Texas license, but it wasn't a problem. The pills were shipped to my virtual mailbox, forwarded to my Texas address, and then, miraculously, there they were, in my hands. I got the pills just in time. I was 12 weeks pregnant. When I received abortion medication through the mail, it was very much 
script. It had, you know, a shipment from India. It's like absolutely no marketing on it. It was very discreet, it. like you would order anything um, from Amazon. Nobody else would have known what it was. This is what the pills looked like. This is what they taste like. These are the supplies I gathered to have on hand, and one I didn't, but wish I'd had. I took the first pill immediately. This one terminates the pregnancy, but for me, it didn't feel like anything. But the next set? Medication was extremely painful. It was the worst pain that I'd ever had in my life. Just a lot of cramping, a lot of nausea, a lot of blood loss. You get headaches, fever, and chills. I was my best friend. I was puking so hard, um, like everything inside of me was contracting. It felt like my abdomen was bursting. I was passing so much blood, I felt dizzy. On a pain scale out of 10, I was at a 20. I thought I might need to go to the hospital, but I'd heard stories of nurses and doctors reporting women to law enforcement. My state has basically made abortion a crime and turned its citizens into spies. Legally, we're in uncharted waters. We can't predict all the creative ways prosecutors might try to criminalize this choice. And that's why, to this day, I haven't told a single friend about this. Sometimes, I just sit in my car and try to process the injustice of my situation. Self-managed abortion is not a substitute for having full reproductive rights. But despite unjust laws, deception, and stigma, this abortion enabled me to maintain control over my own life. I have so many more things that I, I want to do with my life before having a child. Having my abortion gifted me my ability just to care for the children that I do have. I was able to actually buy a home. <laughs> Honestly, like not to be dramatic, I don't know if I would still be alive if I would have been forced to have a child with my first partner. I don't have any feelings of guilt or anxiety about it whatsoever. It's just uh, going to be a bad memory one day. The real solution is a society which values women's bodily autonomy. But until then, self-managed abortion will be the best way for some to break themselves free.